Howdy, partners. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Well, everyone, it's Valentine's Day, and today I decided to blog an old musical movie that is fun, romantic, but not kitty. And I think I know just the one to do. Firstly, let me talk about a show that became the first musical I performed in with my friends and family at Musical Theater Village. Oklahoma. Based on Lynn Riggs' 1931 play, Green Grow the Lilacs, set in the Oklahoma Territory outside the town of Claremore in 1906. The show tells the story of a farm girl named Lori Williams in her courtship by two rival suitors, cowboy Curly McLean and the sinister and frightening farmhand Judd Fry. A secondary romance concerns cowboy Will Parker and his flirtatious fiance Ado Annie. The original Broadway production opened on March 31, 1943. It became a box office smash and ran for about 2,212 performances, which is really impressive since this was Rodgers and Hammerstein's first musical they ever worked on together. Ever since 1943, Oklahoma has long been a popular choice for school and community productions, and Rodgers and Hammerstein won a special Pulitzer Prize for Oklahoma in 1944. Now, ever since I started performing with Musical Theater Village in fall 2005, Oklahoma has been a favorite of mine. And since it was my first show back then, I had to start at the bottom as an ensemble part of the cast. But later on, in summer 2013, I got the role of Slim, which wasn't really that big, but I'm glad that I did have a few lines. But unfortunately, things got rocky for me during that time, since that was when a giant cell tumor started giving me trouble in my left femur. But I'm glad that the tumor won't be coming back anytime soon, due to my leg getting operated twice so far. And now, this year, my friends are performing Oklahoma to kick off the 2018 season. And not only am I reprising my role as Slim, but they also gave me the role of Allie Hackham. Anyway, for today's blog, we're going to talk about the movie adaptation of this musical classic and see how it compares to the version I'm in with Musical Theater Village. Released on October 11th, 1955, the movie is, well, Oklahoma. Alright, let's get started, y'all. There's a box social coming up, and Curly asks Lori Williams if she'll be his date. Trouble is, Lori thinks he's waited too long, and, in a fit of pike, accepts an offer from the boorish Judge Fry instead. Meanwhile, Lori's friend, Ado Annie, is torn between two men, a cowboy named Will Parker and a foreign peddler named Allie Hackham. Both women struggle to know their own hearts before it's too late. So, what can I say other than what a classic this movie is, and I'm surprised that this movie is as old as my father. But in order to explain why I love this movie, Let's move on to Mustang Notes. Interest in a film version of Oklahoma dates as far back as 1943, when the musical first opened on Broadway. United Artists, Columbia Pictures, 20th Century Fox, and MGM were among the many Hollywood studios interested in the project. Ultimately, the film rights were bought by the Magna Theatre Corporation, a company founded by George Scars, Joseph Schneck, and Michael Todd. Magna was initially founded in order to develop a new widescreen process Todd created called Todd AO, 
and ended up financing the film independently after a deal with Fox fell through. Including the cost of developing a new process, Magna invested $11 million in the movie. Although the film was initially to have been shot on location in the title state, the producers opted to shoot elsewhere, apparently because the oil wells would be a distraction for exterior scenes. Location shooting was done mostly in Arizona. The cornfield in the opening number, as well as the reprise song, Surrey with the Fringe on Top, was shot at the historic Kanoa Ranch in Green Valley. The train station used in the Kansas City routine was located in Elgin, Arizona. Soundstage and backlot sequences were filmed at MGM Studios in Culver City, California. Oklahoma was the first production photographed at Todd A.O. The original specification for Todd A.O. involved running at 30 frames per second, which made it impossible to produce 35 millimeters, which ran at 24 frames per second. Reduction prints from the Todd A.O. negative. Therefore, it was simultaneously shot in the more established Cinemascope 35 millimeters format to allow presentations in theaters lacking 70 millimeter equipment. Hence, there are actually two different versions of the movie comprising different takes. Director Zinnemann mentioned that shooting the film in both formats was a precautionary measure as the converted CA 1930s fearless superfilm 65mm Todd AL camera was still being tested during production. The film won two Academy Awards, one for Best Music Scoring of a Musical Picture, and the other for Best Sound Recording. Rodgers and Hammerstein personally oversaw the film to prevent the studio from making changes of the kind that were then typical of stage-to-film musical adaptations, such as putting in new songs by different composers. They also maintained artistic control over the film versions of several other, other stage musicals. The Oklahoma movie follows the original stage version extremely closely, more so than any other Rodgers and Hammerstein stage-to-film adaptation. However, it did divide the very long first scene into several shorter scenes, changing the location of several of the songs in the process. In a nod to Green Grow the Lilacs, which was the basis of Oklahoma, Judd attempts to get revenge on Curly and Lori by burning a haystack they stand on after their wedding, rather than simply attacking Curly with a knife, as in the stage version of the musical. As Curly and Lori stand on top of the burning haystack, Judd pulls a knife and taunts Curly. The couple then jumps down, with Curly landing on Judd and inadvertently causing him to fall on his own knife. To me, that scene was pretty extreme. The film omitted very little from the stage production, cutting only two songs, such as Ali Hackham's It's a Scandal, It's an Outrage, and Judd's Lonely Room song, and thus ran for about two and a half hours much longer than most other screen musicals at the time. It was the first of the huge roadshow musical films that would eventually overrun Hollywood in the 1960s. In my opinion, for the time, the scenery and sets looked very beautiful, and while some parts were shot inside sound stages, they still looked very good. Also, one of my favorite scenes include the part where Lori escapes from Judd in a wagon, and the scene where Lori and Curly get married, since my theater friends don't include those parts in their version. Also, there are a few things in this film that are a bit mature for younger audiences. They include adult language in the movie. But thankfully, it doesn't go too far compared to films released nowadays. Also, 
You know that cylinder device called the Little Wonder that's featured in this movie? Well, that thing may seem harmless due to it showing pictures, but it's also very dangerous. Because it has a little trigger that springs a knife at you. I mean, if that little wonder is that dangerous, then I don't want to meet the person who invented it like that. Now, since Rodgers and Hammersteins worked on this show, the songs for Oklahoma have gone to become musical theater classics. But, compared to the version that Musical Theater Village has done, some of the songs in this movie have new verses and are extended with dance break sequences. Anyway, my favorite songs in this movie are Farmer and the Cowman and All or Nothing. Also, I like Kansas City, Can't Say No, and the title song, Oklahoma, since I was introduced to those songs during elementary school choir. Also, the songs that I think are very sweet are Many a New Day, People Will Say We're in Love, and Out of My Dreams, aka The Dream Ballet, which my mom finds pretty similar to the Gay Little Spring song from Bambi. Also, I think Oh What a Beautiful Morning is a great song to sing when the sun rises every morning. I also think the song The Surrey with the Fringe on Top is pretty funny at times. Unfortunately, my least favorite song in this show is Poor Judd is Dead for two reasons. One, this song is pretty slow. And two, the song is about suicide, which is pretty stupid. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes and songs, let's talk about the actors in this movie. Let's start with Curly McLean, played by Gordon McRae, who got to act in another Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, Carousel. To me, Curly is a great character, and he's really good with horses. Plus, I really like Gordon's acting as him. Plus, his singing has a very powerful baritone in it. Also, I kind of find it funny when Curly shoots a knot hole in Judd's smokehouse and sad when he had to sell his saddle, his horse, and his gun during the box social. Next, we have our main character, Lori Williams played by Shirley Jones, who not only got to be in Carousel with Gordon McRae, but she also got to be in Music Man, the Partridge Family TV series, and Christmas is Here Again. In my opinion, for her first role, Shirley was wonderful as Lori, plus her singing voice is just amazing. Also, I think Lori is a very independent country girl, and I think what she made for the box social seemed really tasty. Next up, we have Aunt Eller, played by Charlotte Greenwood. And, to be honest, she's the best character in the show, in my opinion. To me, Aunt Eller is a really supportive woman to her niece and neighbors, and I think she has a heart of gold. Plus, she's a great auctioneer. However, the part where she fires off a gun during the Farmer and Cowman song always makes me jump. Next, we come to Will Parker, played by Gene Nelson. While Will is another great character, and he's very skilled with a rope. In my opinion, he's not very smart. Because after he gets his $50 while in Kansas City, he spends it on gifts for Edo Annie. Plus, Will isn't very good with math either. But on the other hand, Will never gives up without a fight, 
even if he has to be a rival to Ali Hakim. Next we have Will's love interest, Ado Annie, played by Gloria Graham, who got an award nomination for her role in Crossfire. In the show, Ado Annie is a really flirty girl who likes to kiss any man she comes across. But in my eyes, Gloria's acting as Ado Annie isn't really that good compared to the way my theater friends act as her. Also, the way Gloria sings makes her sound like Katie from the Unico movie, in my opinion. Next, we come to my character, Ali Hakam, a Persian peddler played by Eddie Albert, who got to be in Disney's Escape to Witch Mountain. Now, judging from my experience as Ali, he's pretty similar to Harold Hill from The Music Man, even though Ali is not a con artist, and he's a flirter like Count Antonio from the Sworn Princess Royally Undercover, except Ali isn't evil. Plus, if Oklahoma was ever remade these days, I know just the actor who would be the perfect choice to play as Ali. Despite the fact that he's my least favorite comedian. Anyway, I gotta say, Allie Hackham's wagon in this movie looks very well customized with his merchandise. Throughout the movie, Allie sells garters and underwear to Aunt Eller and the Elixir of Egypt to Lori. He later shows Judd some postcards from Paris and buys most of the gifts that Will got from Kansas City. He even hangs out with Ado Annie a lot throughout the show, even though Allie doesn't really want her. Also, to me, doing a Persian accent is hard, and I think his Persian goodbye is pretty sweet, though I have to do it four times in the same scene. Next we come to Ado Annie's dad, Andrew Carnes, played by James Whitmore, who, after this movie, got to voice Mark Twain in Will Vinton's The Avengers of Mark Twain. In my eyes, Andrew's entrance makes me think of Elmer Fudd from Looney Tunes, since he was shooting rabbits. Also, I think Andrew is a very serious man, and he doesn't really trust just any man to be with his daughter, unless they were worth a lot. Plus, I can't believe that Andrew has to threaten my character by pointing his gun at me. Also, Andrew is a fair judge while Curly was on trial for Judd's death. Next we have Gertie Cummings, played by Barbara Lawrence. Not much to say about her, except she's perkier than Ado Annie, and that laugh she makes throughout the movie sounds like a horse way. Also, nearing the end of the show, Gertie marries Allie Hackham because the moon shined on the barrel of her father's shotgun. Finally, we have our villain for the show, Judd Fry played by Rod Steger, whom I remember from Tim Burton's Mars Attacks. This guy worked as a farmhand on Aunt Eller's farm, and to me, Judd is a tad odd, due to the fact that he's seen stalking and pestering Lori, and later on, he tries to kill Curly with the little wonder that he bought from Will. Also, in my opinion, Judd's Smokehouse is pretty similar to Hagrid's Hut in the Harry Potter franchise. Also, what makes Judd creepy is that he has photographs of naked women all over his wall. Other actors in the film include J.C. Flippin as Pete Skidmore and Roy Barcroft as Marshall. 
And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Oklahoma is a classic Western musical, and I'm happy that this became the first show that I performed in with my musical theater village friends. The scenery and sets are good for the time. The characters like Aunt Eller, Curly, Will, and Allie Hackham are great. Lori was a great character for Shirley Jones' first film role. Ado Annie in this film may not be that good compared to today's acting, but maybe it's just how I see it. And the villain Judd Fry is really messed up. Also, the songs by Rodgers and Hammerstein are classics. I love them all. Minus one, of course. So, if you like classic musicals, then by all means, go watch this movie. Though, I must warn you that there are a little bit of adult humor and language, as well as gun use. But, I'm sure your kids will like this film, no matter what this movie has in store. And so, I give this movie a full 100%. Well, that's all for today, partners. But before I go, I'd like to ask you guys to come see Oklahoma performed at Musical Theater Village. If you'd like to see it, then by all means, go to this link listed here for information on tickets. But you only have until March 11th to see it. Anyway, be sure to join me again for my next blog. Until then, this is Joshua Orr of the Mustang Prince saying, Happy Valentine's Day, and Mustang Power! <laughs>